Rescue efforts are underway after Ian made landfall in southwest Florida yesterday at near Category 5 strength. The devastation so widespread on the west coast with communities flooded, homes destroyed, and more than 2 million people without power. The death toll also expected to rise and could be in the hundreds. And we're getting our first look at the damage from above, and it is extensive. Sky 10 flying over southwest Florida earlier today. The chopper capturing the bridge from the mainland to Sanibel Island taken out by Ian. We're also seeing homes and boats destroyed in that storm. We do have crews spread out all across the state today for you. And we'll start with Local 10's Andrew Perez, who's live in Naples. Andrew. So I want to be very clear, just like you mentioned, the focus today is on search and rescue. But now that these water levels have dropped dramatically here on the West Coast, people are starting to come out. They're starting to take a look at some of the damage at some of the cars, at some of the boats, many of them that have literally floated away pretty far away, too. We've got four pontoon boats that ended up here in the center median. We're told they came from a business that is not very close to this area. Up and down the West Coast, just an extreme situation. Ian making history as one of the most powerful hurricanes to ever make landfall in Florida, decimating parts of the state. The storm is having broad impacts across the state and some of the flooding you're going to see in areas hundreds of miles from where this made landfall um, are going to set record. 2.5 million Floridians told to evacuate, but some who chose to stay had to be rescued by first responders. High water levels prompting drastic rescue calls in Lee County. Caller reporting a sinking vehicle, unknown if he's breathing, caller disconnected. And so many people are still waiting for help. We have thousands of calls on 911 that are prioritized and we're answering as we speak. There are thousands of people that are waiting to be rescued. ABC's Ginger Z facing the eye wall. We see these winds and that little house that we were talking about all day has gone succumbed to the storm surge. Now the blue roof is all that's left floating in the water toward the building. Fort Myers flooded with up to a 12 foot storm surge, shredding structures to pieces, debris floating in the streets, cars submerged, some waking up without homes. This floating debris was once somebody's house. Ooh. In Naples, Kimberly Walker telling ABC about the moments water began to seep into her home. The water got to be a lot more and a lot more and a lot more. And it was just, it didn't matter what you did. The water started coming into my home, reaching about mid-thigh. I knew I had to get out. In the city of Punta Gorda, water service is out. A boil water notice is in effect until further notice. But many of the home and business owners out here say that the damage is extreme and that these areas, they will take quite a bit of time to recover. Drew, we noticed the cars behind you coming in. You even mentioned now that the water levels have receded a bit. You've seen more traffic coming into Naples. What's the traffic been like for you on your commute over there? Have you seen a lot of people trying to get back to their homes and such? Yeah, again, everybody's trying to assess the damage right now. So there's a flood of people trying to get back to their homes. But there are also so many more emergency response teams, not only from Southwest Florida, but from all over the state, from other states as well. On the way in, just FPL alone, we saw a bunch of emergency FPL trucks, dozens and dozens of them going across Alligator Alley. That also caused traffic issues. It's again why emergency personnel encouraging people out here that if they don't need to leave where they are right now, it's best just to stay put. They understand that everybody's anxious. They want to see how their homes fared. They want to see how their friends are doing. Uh, but right now they just want to uh, people to stay put. I want you to take a look at uh, an interview we conducted just a short time ago. We spoke with a few business owners out here as well. They had extensive water damage to their businesses. Take a look. We thought Irma was bad. We thought Charlie was bad. Uh, this is this is not like I've never experienced this all in my 29 years of life. Cars um, abandoned. Uh, boats are floating everywhere. You can see the boats back there uh, just crashed into everywhere. It, 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 it's devastating. A lot of uh, homes back here in Bayshore were evacuated. Um, some casualties actually. Everything kind of destroyed. I mean computers, a lot of paperwork titles that I have for cars. I had to take them out. They're wet. In spite of everything, you know, we have our lives and that's more important, you know. I think it's also important to point out there's no cell service. Obviously, we're very familiar with big storms like this in South Florida. There's no to limited gas. We saw one gas station that was actually open, but obviously there was a very long line 
no power as well. So crews right now urging people to, again, just kind of stay calm, remain indoors. There are 100 portable cell phone towers that are actually in route being set up all across southwest Florida right now. That's the latest here in Naples. I'm Andrew Perez, Local 10 News. Thank you. And as we mentioned, the devastation widespread in southwest Florida after Ian. Sky 10 capturing images from above earlier today of so much underwater. A devastating aftermath from Hurricane Ian. Footage from Sky 10 over the Fort Myers area showing a new perspective once the sun rose earlier this morning. A clear view of wreckage for miles. Boats, homes, streets and bridges wrecked by the storm. That includes portions of the Sanibel Causeway collapsed or washed away. The causeway is the only way to get to or from Sanibel and Captiva Islands to Florida's mainland. The governor today not mincing words on the historic nature of what raged across the southwestern part of Florida. The amount of water that's been rising and will likely continue to rise today, even as the storm is passing, uh, is basically a 500 year flood event. The bird's eye view also highlighting fires consuming some homes, smoke billowing from the remains of others. First responders likely not responding to incidents like this. Instead, any efforts by them will be focused on rescuing people still stuck in what remains. As of right now, we are prioritizing calls. Uh, and, you know, we were looking at roughly, give or take, a couple thousand calls that came through 911 of people that are in need. And we just, some of them we can't access right now. From ground level in Fort Myers Beach, Joe Orlandini and his family bunkering down on the third floor of his home after water levels climbed the two floors below. We weren't prepared for quite a storm of this magnitude. We were hoping it would dodge us. It, it didn't. It got worse. And as Ian continues its destructive march across Florida, parts of the East Coast are getting pummeled with that rain and wind. We were already expecting about 12 to 20 inches of rain. Some places could see up to 30 inches. So stay home, stay safe. Ian, now a tropical storm is near Florida's east coast and is moving back over water. Ian is expected to re-intensify and could be at near hurricane strength when it, when it approaches the coast of South Carolina on Friday. A hurricane watch has been issued for South Carolina and the Georgia coast.